I think we all have to uh, have a framework for um, ourselves, for our assistants, and for our athletes. Just um, how are we going to go into this process of teaching and learning? How do we organize it so that everyone can be on the same page? And so the way that um, I've organized it for my staff and our athletes is this. Um, if we're really focused and thinking well, then um, we are going to have our attention in three areas, which is how are we moving? How are we seeing? And, and how are we communicating? These are the things that um, we can see and touch on the court that um, will impact um, our, our level of play. And I, and I like this quote just as a reminder um, to all of us coaches that we have priorities, whether we name them or not, whether we write them down, we have priorities and biases that we care about and they will come out and they will show up in our team. And so if you haven't gone through this process of articulating what you care about or what you see, uh, I think it's important because um, it just allows you to really be intentional with, with what you're asking your staff and athletes to do. So um, this is the lens that I, that I view our gym in every time I walk in or any activity that I'm watching. I'm watching the way that we're moving. I'm looking at our athletes' eyes and what they're seeing, and I'm listening to what they're saying and how they're saying it. And um, that always keeps things organized uh, and helps me teach better. So what does it mean to, to move well in the world of transition offense? What does it mean to move well? I think it's, we'll break it down kind of by positions a little bit, but um, if we're talking about defenders, um, I think the simple one where we spend a lot of time is, uh, where do we want to start? What's our base defense positioning uh, and why? How do we want them to move as different attackers get set? We're gonna expect our athletes to move in particular ways. And, and so we need to make sure that we explain that to them and show that to them. Uh, where do we want them to stand? I think every coach is, is having lots of dialogue about that. How do we want them to stand? You know, We were having a discussion about this this morning, even in our office. What do we want our defensive posture to look like for our, uh, for our athletes? And then, of course, how do we want them to perform these different defensive skills, forearm dig, overhead dig, uh, maybe a pancake or a sprawl? Um, you know, what, what do we expect in terms of those movements? So those are all movement-based uh, questions for, for our defenders. Um, after that first contact, we've got to think about our setters. You know, where do we want them to start? How do we want them to move in transition? Um, you know, there's going to be some controlled digs and there's going to be some uncontrolled digs. And, and what is our expectation of how they're going to move around the court um, in those situations? Of course, how do we want them to set the ball, you know, um, in transition? That might be more feedback about their arm work and their hand work. Um, but that, that's a bunch of movement-based thoughts for our setters. And then we have our attackers, where they need to be as um, – as either off blockers in the front row or defenders, how do they move from their defensive position to their offensive position? And um, that can be from a block move. That can be from an off blocker position. That could be after you play a first contact. There's lots of different scenarios where you have to know how to move in transition. Um, so we're looking at that, how they approach, of course, how, how many steps they're taking uh, to approach uh, the angle in which they approach. These are all kind of move well concepts. Um, so again, how they approach could be footwork, could be arm work, could be hand work. So um, that's kind of the basis for, for looking at transition offense through the move well lens. These are the questions that, that come up. You know, we've got some for our defenders, we have some for our setters, and we have some for our attackers. Okay, we'll go through some clips now uh, from practice. We'll watch it in two views, kind of the behind the coach's view, then maybe a view where you can see maybe a side view where you can actually hear the interaction between me and the athletes. So we'll start here with this first clip.
So in this first clip that we watched from the behind view, we're looking at the first and the third attacks. And um, what we're looking at is where these middles are transitioning to, specifically, um, you know, how far away from the sideline, how many steps they're using, that is kind of the focus. And so um, as I show the second clip here, you'll get to hear some feedback between me and the athlete um, with the first athlete talking mostly about um, where she transitioned to and whether it was the correct place on the floor. With the second athlete, there's some conversation about that movement um, and also uh, about the timing. The set is gonna be coming from a long distance. So there'll be some conversation about that as well. Um, there'll be a clip in between of an outside hitter attacking, but we're looking at the two middles here. Very nice. No far, no wider than that is what I'm thinking. Is Mel with me? Yeah. Okay. You're right on the right where you need to be. Okay. Good job. Good try. Hey. Go Ready to go for it. Go for it, DC. Nice job. Okay. 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 It's, I would make that pretty much like first step or zero step because yeah. it's probably going to die inside, right? But it's fun that she's trying that. So again, that's the, uh, the dialogue there with those two athletes uh, working on their transition. Um, so, so that's just kind of what, what I would be talking about in, in a simple transition movement where we're looking at the footwork uh, of our middles coming off the net, four off, three on. Uh, you know, timing the second athlete again, the language there was away equals delay. Wanted to slow down her timing uh, because of the distance of the set. So that, that's the first clip. We're going into the second clip now, and, and what we're going to see here is um, just uh, kind of our setter having to deal with a really high dig and, and, and how do we create some rhythm there. And the mistake she's going to make is to stand too far underneath the dig. And, uh, and we'll show you that clip here now. So really, really short, you know, really short clip. Uh, we'll let you hear kind of the longer uh, interaction from a different view on what we want this athlete to do uh, to handle that. It's all standing underneath the dig, right? And just waiting for it to come down. So ball gets hit. I'm going to stand back. I know where their target is. I'm going to stand back. And if it's high, I'll wait. And then right, left, right into it where I have some rhythm. But I don't want to find myself just standing underneath yeah. this. Okay. There's no rhythm there, right? So again, we went from kind of transition of our uh, defenders. Uh, now we were talking about kind of the movement of our setter here. So second example of, of move well feedback. Heading into our, uh, our third clip here, and, and we're gonna get to see um, an athlete attacking the ball out of system. We're gonna try and catch her doing it right in this scenario. This is an athlete that is pretty capable, and we want some of her teammates, particularly her younger teammates, to emulate what she does uh, with her footwork and how she positions herself to handle a ball being set from really far away. So we'll see it here from, from the end line view. Here we go. And then we'll hear a little bit of a, a longer dialogue here um, with that play. Here we go. Shot, Claire. See the dig, see the dig, see the dig, see the dig. Nice shot, Claire Hoffman. Hey, just to clarify, like that, sets from non-setters are what tempo set? Sam Drexel. 
Zero step sets. Thank you, Emma. Zero step sets in your extensive hitting career. You wait, you see it, four steps to the ball, just like that. Nice job. Here we go. Good ball. So again, a bit of a uh, move work, uh, move well example uh, for our athletes here. Um, out of system attacking, big, big, big part of transition. Can't spend enough time on it. Um, and I'm always amazed that we can run, lots of teams can run really diverse, fast offenses. And then when the game forces them to slow down because of a bad first contact, they're often early or they're not efficient with their steps. And uh, just really think there's value in making sure that we've got that part of transition covered. Uh, where do we want our athletes to stand out of system? How do we want them to move out of system? Uh, at some point, you're going to have to set a high ball uh, in every match, and it's usually going to be a pretty important moment. So um, just a good clip there, I think, for moving well.